Welcome to the Oni's Eye. Uh, I am your host, Master Silk. Um, and as you can see in front of me, I have a copy of the Legend of the Five Rings corset. <clears throat> and we are here tonight to talk about, um, to give a review of the corset. So Fantasy Flight Games has gifted us with a copy of the yet-to-be-released uh, Legend of the Five Rings, the card game, core set. And uh, you can see I have not opened it yet. We are fixing to do that right now on stream, so come check it out. Okay, so you guys can see that we're going to open this up. Normal final final uh, fantasy flight games uh, booklet of uh, other items that they have. Pretty standard. A full color learn to play document. The ring tokens. The honor dial, the honor tokens, and the first player token, and the fate tokens. And then inside the middle, we have the, the honored card, and the dishonored, which are on the back of one another. And then we have two bags here. I know this is what the players were, are really wanting to see. They're wanting to see what these are. Now I'm not going to spoil all of this for you. You guys will uh, have to wait patiently just a little bit. But in, I've, in, I've intentionally done this so that uh, you guys can see some of the stuff. The bags are pretty well separated into uh, the cards that are the non-dynasty cards and non-fate cards. And then 
all of the uh, Dynasty based cards are here in bag one. Now this is going to be awful telling. For each core set, you're only going to get one copy of each of the clanned cards. Whether that's Dynasty or Fate. notice I laid out some duplicates here. Uh, Atomo Courtier, Sup and Guardian, uh, Keeper Initiate, Me and Mystic, uh, Seeker Initiate, Wandering Ronin, uh, Favorable Ground, and Imperial Summons. Uh, these are the only conflict or only dynasty cards that you get multiples of in a core set. Um, they sort of help fill the role of the other cards uh, out of the box to help you be able to build to learn to play decks. Um, obviously, the um, the the play out of box out of the box rules is uh, a thirty card dynasty, a thirty card fate uh, ex uh, deck five provinces, a stronghold, and a keeper seeker to be able to play. So these are the only ones that you have duplicates of in the dynasty cards. Uh, most of the characters are three of's, um, except for the keeper and the seeker initiates because unfortunately they're um, <coughs> restricted by what type they are. and then the holdings. Very similarly, you get one copy of each uh, conflict card in that is of a single clan, of each clan. And then you're going to get two copies of each non unique or each uh, neutral card. Uh, this allows you to build, um, build your decks with having just enough neutral cards along with um, uh, in clan cards for one faction. Uh, you also get one of each of the keepers. The seekers are on the back. Uh, you get two learn to play cards with each of the phases and what the rings do and what the symbols are and a copy of the Imperial Favor. So for those of you who maybe have never played the Legend of the Five Rings, who want a little more um, understanding, <coughs> um, you represent one of seven great clans. Um, 
I will have all of the uh, links to the uh, way ofs in the in the uh, document below. Uh, each clan is represented by a stronghold. There's one for each of the seven clans at this time in the Imperial histories. Uh, specifically, um, those who may have played the original game, uh, we have started at a point before um, uh, the death of Hantai 30, the 38th. Um, what point exactly we're at, they have not said, and we don't know what way the story is going to go. Um, so all the old story is no longer canon. This is a card that some people were asking about. This is the Scorpion Stronghold. It uh, reads, if you are less honorable than your opponent by the Stronghold, take one honor from that player. Um, that's the only Stronghold that has not been uh, revealed. <coughs> so, what are the differences between um, this version of the game and the new f and the old version? Yep, a little too close. You can see here, this is one of the honor dials. It's very well constructed. Oops. The political side of the void token and the military. And so, beyond just the um, the tokens and the <coughs> the well uh, the artwork, um, which is fantastic. Um, as a matter of fact, I think the artwork might be the best of fin uh, of uh, Fantasy Flight games, except for. Eh, I'm not even going to say that about Destiny, although I love Destiny's artwork. The artwork here for L5R second to none, it always has been. Um, now as many of you know, I've been a part of the, I played the original, the CCG, and now I have also uh, had the opportunity to play the LCG. There is quite a bit of difference in the flow of the game. Um, one of the big things as far as a from that standpoint is the fact that it um, the game does flow uh, differently. Um, you have um, on your strongholds You have numbers here at the bottom uh, that say st that you're starting honor, that you're um, um, in the amount of uh, fate that you have. Uh, fate is your resource in this game, and um, as far as the uh, resource system goes, um, in old L5R. Um, 
if you um, having an advantage in gold typically led to a massive advantage uh, in board state. If you were able to get gold early and your opponent wasn't, your opponent just got ran over. Uh, in this version, with everybody uh, pretty much ending up with the same amount of fate um, each turn, your decisions um, certainly make the game um, you, you don't have to worry about gold screw um, uh, another aspect that has changed is the fact that if a um, um, when you uh, lose when you lose a battle um, not all your people are destroyed. Now that was one of the biggest draw, one of the bigger drawbacks to the old L5R was the fact that if you lost a con if you lost a battle, anybody that any card that was at that battle was destroyed. Um, and so you had to be very careful about what battles you got into. In this version, um, they actually there's actually a punishment if you don't have anybody that defended uh, the province um, at the uh, the end of the battle. If there's nobody left there at the battle, then uh, you lose an honor. Um, so, um, uh, but if you even if you, if you put people in the in the battle, they're not destroyed. Um, uh, if you lose. Um, that's sort of the big difference. Um, that's where if you can't destroy people through uh, normal actions or through most normal actions or through uh, losing a, a battle, how do, you, how do you destroy people? Well, that's what the fate tokens are for. For each character that you play, um, you, you may... Um, spend extra to put a number of fate onto them equal to them that amount of extra you paid so let's say So I'm going to use this Guest of Honor as an example. Uh, the cost is four. Oops, I'm in the corner. Um, so I can pay five. If I pay five, uh, she'll get an extra fate on her. Uh, so you have. To, so what to, what that does is it means that you have some sort of uh, you have some control over how long your character stays around. Um, if you don't put any fate on it, you know, so each turn after you, um, the phases go uh, dynasty, which is kind of backwards the way we're used to it, it goes dynasty, draw phase, conflict phase, fate phase, and regroup phase. <coughs> During the dynasty phase, uh, players go back and forth playing characters uh, from their uh, provinces. And actions from their hand or from in play uh, until both players pass success uh, consecutively. Um, there is even a lot of play in that because if you're the first player if you are the first player in a game uh, you get to take the first action during each phase however um, it can be just as important to be able to take a 
be the second person playing because you get to see what your opponent does and then you get to do make your play and there's a lot of play just in the dynasty phase itself uh, once <clears throat> once each player passes we go to the draw phase and unlike most games where you only get to draw one card during this phase or sometimes two depending on what game you're playing um, that's the the honor dial comes into play here and uh, what happens is each player will secretly bid a number place it face down on the table and then they will reveal their their number to each player uh, in this case I'm showing a four um, so this is the number of cards that I would draw this turn now depending on what my opponent has bid if my opponent bids a five then he is acting more dishonorably than I am he's trying to win at all costs so there's a difference between those two five minus four is one so my opponent would have to give me one honor but let's say my opponent bid one instead of five now I'm acting more dishonorably than he is he gets to draw one card I get to draw four cards so I am refilling my conflict hand um, but in doing so I also have given him three honor so it's a tight rope rope that you have to walk about how many cards you want in hand and exactly what you want to do <coughs> uh, with your honor uh, now in this game uh, the, each of the clans start at either 10 11 or 12 honor uh, the uh, to win a game uh, you can win a game by honor same as the old CCG uh, to win uh, you have to be at 25 honor it's an immediate win if you if a player hits that number if uh, if a player's honor drops to zero they lose the game via dishonor and it's also an immediate uh, immediate um, ability so what happens <coughs> So now that we've gone through those two phases, what we go to next is the conflict phase. And that's where we would um, attempt to attack back and forth. Uh, each province, including the strongholds, have a face down card on them. These are province cards. Uh, they have an element in the bottom left hand corner they have a province strength and they have a game text the card is face down normally when they when at the beginning of the game so you don't know what it is when I, you attack it it is turned face up at that time and this sort of symbolizes well you don't happen you don't really know what your opponent has what traps your opponent has set there so um, it's uh, very flavorful um, <clears throat> you will be battling not only over provinces but over the elemental rings each of the five rings has a different ability and each ability um, affects the game in different ways um, the uh, each time a battle is won uh, whichever ring is selected the winner of the battle gets that ring um, in the case of uh, uh, the attacker is the only one that gets to trigger the ability of the rings 
normally. Uh, there are two sides to these rings. There is a military side in red and a political side in blue. Each, um, each character in the game, besides cost, they also have a military number and a political number. They're also the same color as uh, the uh, as the uh, the rings. They also have a glory number, um, which can add or subtract to their stats based on uh, if they're honorable or dishonorable. Um, now what fantasy flight uh, let's see uh, each player can um, each player can declare uh, two conflicts a turn one military one political if they skip a uh, if they skip um a conflict they pass on taking a conflict they cannot come back uh, they cannot take that conflict later on in the turn once it's skipped it's skipped now with provinces if a player wins a conflict and it's by more than what is the, the strength equal to or greater than the strength of the province what happens is is it gets turned around this upper five is broken broken provinces <clears throat> a player uh, if an opponent has three broken provinces you may then attack uh, the province that the stronghold is under. Uh, being able to do so uh, is if you win the conflict at the stronghold's province then um, by enough to break it then you will win the game by military. Uh, now that's slightly different than the old game. The old game you did have four provinces to break but uh, the methods by doing which uh, were, were very different. Um, after the conflict phase we go to the fate phase um, the fate phase uh, is where we do um, uh, a number of things any character who does not have any fate on it during this at the beginning of this phase <coughs> are discarded from play then each character with fate on them has one fate removed from each character so the idea is you kind of want to play out your characters in a fashion where you're going to get the best long-term benefit. Uh, it's not always easy to figure out, you know, how much extra fate to put on a character and how much to hold back. There are so many, so many things that you can do here. It's um, it's difficult to get a grasp on, but it's to me it's so much easier to play than the original. Uh, one mistake in the original and you lose. This game seems to be a little more forgiving, but there um, there are scenarios where you can get completely blown out too. Um, um, also during the fate phase, uh, any rings that were won during the uh, conflict phase are re uh, the, um, the, f the rings that were not contested, were not claimed uh, during the conflict phase, will each get a fate put on them, and then all the other rings will return to the, f to the ring pool uh, to be used again during the next turn. Um, and during the regroup phase, you'll each player will uh, discard any cards they don't want in their provinces, refill them face down, and 
then they get to straighten all the cards in play, pass the first player token, and start the next turn. Now that's a lot to go over in just a couple of minutes. Uh, but as far as the flow and the fun factor, uh, the, from the flavor aspect, FFG has done a fantastic job. Uh, there are some things that I loved about the old game that I will not get an opportunity to do in the new game. Um, but from a design standpoint they've done a very good job making each of the clans feel like uh, uh, that they've been designed uniquely, that they have their own strengths, they have their own weaknesses, um, and we won't know the actual sh uh, strength of how all of them are um, as far as power level until we actually get more into constructed play, but I think s we'll get some idea of how this will work out uh, during the um, uh, Chrysanthemum Festival at Gen Con. Um, I am will be lucky enough to be a part of the uh, the program, uh, although not as a player. I will be there as a judge. Uh, you will be probably see me wearing a very ridiculous costume, but um, it's uh, rather nice uh, to be able to do something like this. Um, I think. Um, uh, the look and the feel of the game is fantastic. Uh, if you are a fan of the old game, um, even if you're not, even if not everything is to your liking, I still, I still implore you to at least demo it, try it, um, because they have done a, a wonderful job of trying to get uh, all of the flavor and. Um, of the old game into this game without having to scrap everything. Very difficult to do and I think um, Brad, Nate, and Eric did a fantastic job on it. Um, if you um, never got the opportunity to play the original or maybe you were just a fan of the RPG because you, know, you enjoyed seeing the story, talking about the story, um, you know, it's it's definitely worth a try. Uh, the demo tables are going to be slammed, I'm sure, uh, at Gen Con. Obviously, we've got a 700 f player event on Thursday. Uh, that is m by far Fantasy Flight Games' largest event ever. Uh, just blowing away their numbers. Um, there's a good number of artists that are going to be there uh, that have done work in this set or that they've reused from the old game um, with um, folks like Drew Baker, uh, Steve Arkyle, <coughs> uh, Charles Urbach, um, just to name a few. So, uh, They spent two years uh, getting, well, not quite two years, but, you know, they spent almost a year and a half just redesigning it before they even, well, I don't think it's quite a year and four months redesigning it before they even let beta testers touch the game. Um, Balance is really the only question, um, but everything else certainly is there. This could be their best base set ever, or best course set ever. Um, the um, the other thing is the story. Um, the, uh, the story aspects, they're certainly pushing the story aspects of the game to continue. 
Uh, they've got plenty lined up. Their organized play seems to be uh, in a great spot. Um, much better than the other games, simply because they have more control, which is very nice. Um, so um, don't um, uh, don't discount what you can do uh, in this game or continue to do. Um, I think there will be less of what uh, AEG did as far as story story prizes and. Um, because they got, they really got to the point that they couldn't keep up with what they were giving out, uh, and that's sort of where uh, where it ended up. Um, if you if you have um, if this world or the idea of um, um, you know. Um, Asian history or culture um, uh, uh, samurai or wushu films um, interest you, you're a fan of martial arts um, uh, I certainly feel like you should uh, at least sit down and take a look if you're going to be at Gen Con, you will find me at the Fantasy Flight uh, Games booth uh, in the Tournament Hall uh, all day Thursday. Um, I will be in and out of there on Friday and Saturday as well. Um, so uh, come by, say hi, and remember, there is no escape from the Tiger.